now at Australia Sydney Met and win a scholarship of up to $15,000. Apply today. Tonight on 1st at 9, this Monday, the 15th of April 2024. Government permits. Sri Lanka to gradually relax import restrictions on vehicles while focusing on strengthening the rupee and building reserves. Advantages. Sri Lanka is among nations that could potentially benefit from debt for nature swaps, highlights the International Institute for Environment and Development. Per capita loss. Sri Lanka's state-owned enterprise losses in 2022 calculated to a per capita loss of over 33,000 a citizen. Concerned. International bondholders raise concerns over four areas of Sri Lanka's debt restructuring process, says Chief of Staff to the President. First at nine with Indivadi Amwata. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. And a very warm welcome. You're joining us tonight on First at Nine once again with a number of stories to report. Uh, of course, my um, co anchor Mahish Johnny is under the weather tonight, but assures to return back on set tomorrow to join me in bringing the very latest to you from across Sri Lanka and around the world. Tonight too we have a number of stories to report uh, but the debt restructuring uh, topics especially concerning Sri Lanka and uh, uh, debtors of the nation take center stage with even uh, the chief of staff of the president convening uh, media representatives to discuss uh, the current status of Sri Lanka's uh, debt restructuring process and economic uh, recovery. The state-owned enterprise losses, uh, startling revelations have been made of the per capita um, debt that every citizen owes owing to um, the massive losses made by the state-owned enterprises. Um, again, on international news, we will be covering the escalating tensions of Iran and um, Israel and how the region may be at risk of uh, deepening tensions putting pressure on global peace and supply chain, especially uh, the key component of oil. Well, we'll start off with tonight's bulletin with your top story. State Minister of Finance Ranjit Simlapitiya announces that import restrictions on vehicles will be gradually lifted. The government will take the decision after careful consideration of factors such as the requirement of vehicles and the ability of Sri Lanka's road network to support any further vehicle imports. Sri Lanka recently relaxed restrictions to facilitate the importation of 750 uh, vehicles uh, to Sri Lanka that is required by the tourism industry. The State Minister for Finance said such decisions are taken by the government, the Finance Ministry and the Treasury following careful consideration of requirements in the country. We obtained 1,200 million US dollars from the open market in the first quarter of this year. It is a big amount and our reserves have risen to a better level as a result. This is, however, not sufficient. We must improve our reserves to at least 6 to 7 billion US dollars. We eased import restrictions in line with this. We had restricted 1,500 to 2,000 imports. We have gradually lifted such restrictions and at the moment it is only vehicle imports that have been restricted. We are lifting certain restrictions based on the country's requirement. We have provided the opportunity to import 750 vans and 250 buses required by the tourism industry. These decisions are taken based on reports received by the government, finance ministry and the treasury after thorough assessment. It is clear that our reserves are growing and the rupee is strengthening. If we are to ease restrictions imposed on vehicle imports in the future, that would be through careful consideration of what vehicles are essential for the country. 
A committee is looking into this. We will take a suitable decision in the future considering factors such as what vehicles are essential, what types of vehicles are needed, the limit of usage of second-hand vehicles, amount of fuel consumption, the capacity of the road system to support these vehicles, period of time in which the already existing vehicles can be used for and how vehicles that are not being used can be used again. <laughs> New Dulux Pentalite Hygiene Plus. Refreshing walls for generations. Dulux, Dulux, Dulux. A report issued by the UK-based non-profit International Institute for Environment and Development says that debt for nature swaps where poorer countries have debt written off in return for protecting ecosystems such as barrier reefs or rainforests could provide 100 billion US dollars for the fight against climate change. The institute has based the estimate on the possibility of debt swaps in many of the 49 less developed countries seen as most at risk of debt crisis. According to the report, Sri Lanka is also among the countries that could benefit from debt for nature swaps. The report said that debt for climate and nature swaps are an important but underused tool for addressing three major problems facing less wealthy nations, which include crippling debt, the impacts of climate change and biodiversity loss. If a country and its creditors agree to a swap, a portion of that nation's debt can be written off in exchange for achieving specific, measurable and traceable outcomes in climate or nature projects. Ahead of the World Bank International Monetary Fund Spring Meetings, which begin today, IIED called on international financial institutions and the G20 to promote debt swaps as an important tool for tackling the debt crisis in those countries most at risk from climate change. According to the report, the IMF and World Bank, whose figures the analysis is based on, estimate that the countries in focus collectively owe 431 billion US dollars, mostly to wealthier governments, the IMF, and pension and hedge funds. The report said that these countries received less than 14 million rupees in climate finance, according to Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development figures from 2021, which is significantly less than the countries need to limit climate change or to adapt it. The aim of IIED's report is to encourage a drive for more debt swaps at the upcoming IMF and World Bank Spring Meetings, which started today in Washington, D.C., USA. Laura Kelly, the director of IIED's Shaping Sustainable Markets Research Group, said countries that could benefit included Pakistan, Sri Lanka and the Gambia in West Africa, which is at huge risk of sea level rise, and stressed the need to invest heavily in flood prevention and wetland preservation. She further said that for governments, swaps create some fiscal space while also helping to achieve outcomes in terms of climate and nature that have global impact. Research has found poorer countries spend far more than servicing their debts than they receive in funds to fight climate change and believes debt for nature swaps should be deployed more widely as one of a range of tools to ease the burden on developing countries. President's National Security Advisor and Chief of Staff Sagala Ratnayaka revealed the progress of ongoing discussions on debt restructuring between the government and international bondholders. During a media briefing at the Presidential Secretariat today, Sagala Ratnayaka said that during the course of the discussions, Sri Lanka has had bondholders had raised concerns over four areas of the debt restructuring process. He noted that issues surrounding two of the four areas had already been resolved. Further discussions are to be held in order to reach an accord on the two remaining areas of the debt restructuring process. It is revealed that Sri Lanka's state-owned enterprises have incurred losses amounting to 744 0.6 billion rupees in year 2022. The state-owned enterprises restructuring unit said the losses were incurred by 52 state-owned enterprises during the period. The SOE restructuring unit based on data from the Ministry of Finance said that per capita loss amounting to 33,949 rupees per citizen has been calculated. The SOE unit further said that when the total loss is divided by the total number of taxpayers registered up until 2022, each taxpayer has incurred a bare minimum loss of 17 million rupees. 
Taking you to a political stage, Minister of Agriculture Mahinda Amarbera pledges to work towards putting the Sri Lanka Freedom Party on the right political path. He said SLFP party members are committed to establishing a government. In the meantime, Chairman of the United National Party, Vajira Abewadana, stated that all political parties must unite under the leadership of President Ranu Vikrama Singha. With that, let's take a look at views expressed in the political arena. Maitri Pala Sirisena was caught in this conspiracy and our General Secretary Daya Sirijaya Sekere was removed from his position as a result. Those who are in power within the Sri Lanka Freedom Party today are conspirators. It is a group that has no way forward in the upcoming elections that is behind this conspiracy and Chandrika Bandarunaike is also involved. These forces are backed by decisions of India, America and Europe. We continue to proceed with our political programs. We we will be able to bring the Sri Lanka Freedom Party on the correct path. We will make sure that the Sri Lanka Freedom Party will consist of 40 to 50 MPs within one month. We will ensure that the Sri Lanka Freedom Party will be a party that is strong enough to establish a government. We cannot divide now. We do not have alternative roads. All political parties must unite under the leadership of Ranil Vikram Singha. We must hand over the country to him with the majority of the people's power this year. Ranil alone will take care of Sri Lanka. They must understand that providing less fortunate families of Sri Lanka with 20 kilograms of rice while formulating all policies by only considering those who earn high income will not get them votes. The people of Sri Lanka were able to celebrate the Sinhala and Tamil New Year in some way after several years. If someone says Sri Lanka has not made any progress towards achieving normalcy, he does not have a clear understanding of what is happening. Meanwhile, the party office of the Mabu Janata Party commenced activities for the Sinhala and Tamil New Year under the patronage of party leader Dilip Chaivira. <laughs> On to your weather update, the Met Department today issued amber warnings cautioning of heavy rains and severe lightning in Sri Lanka. Accordingly, thunder showers accompanied by severe lightning are expected at several places in the western Sabragamur and northwestern provinces and to the districts of Gaul, Matara, Kandy and Nuralia. In its advisory, heavy rainfall of above 100 millimeters are also anticipated in the Uva province and to the districts of Matara, Hambantata and Ampara and Batiklo, while prevailing showers are forecast to continue for the next two hours or 24 hours. Owing to the current situation, the Meteorology Department requested the public to take adequate precautions to minimize damages caused as a result of temporarily localized strong winds during thunder showers. The Met Department also requests the public to avoid using wired telephones connected electric appliances and open vehicles during thunder showers or thunderstorms as well as avoid open areas such as paddy fields and open water bodies. In other local news, two individuals including a minor were pronounced dead after a van collided uh, toppled down a precipice in the harbour area in Pusallava yesterday. Meanwhile, police media spokesperson D.I.G. Nihal Taldua revealed that a total of eight accidents were reported during the past 24 hours, claiming the lives of 10 people. With that, here's a look at other local news across Sri Lanka in brief. Two-year-old and his grandfather of 70 years old were reported dead while four others were injured after a van veered off the road and toppled down a precipice in the Halboda area in Pusellava. Police added that another 65-year-old was also pronounced dead shortly after being admitted to a nearby hospital. According to police, a total of seven people were travelling in the van at the time of the accident. In the meantime, the driver of a van involved in a hit-and-run accident was apprehended by Haliala police. The incident occurred when a van travelling towards Badulla last evening ran into a motorcycle and fled the scene. Police revealed that several people, including minors, were travelling in the van at the time of the incident. In Ambalantori yesterday, one person was pronounced dead while another person was hospitalised after two motorcycles collided with each other. According to police, the deceased was identified as an 80-year-old. 
Subsequent to the recent accidents reported so far across the country, police media spokesperson DIG Nihal Taldua revealed that a total of eight accidents were reported during the past 24 hours, claiming the lives of 10 people. He went on to state that five of the eight accidents were caused due to vehicles skidding off roads. In other local news, the body of a 22-year-old woman was recovered from the Victoria Reservoir in Taldeni area today, while her husband is still reported missing. Police said that the couple were bathing in the Victoria Reservoir when they encountered this fatal incident. The couple was identified as residents of the Tiharia area in the Gampa district. Welcome back to the news. We take you to your business segment. The central bank's purchasing managers report for March 2024 showed that the manufacturing index expanded to 62.5, making or marking the highest PMI manufacturing recorded in three years. The central bank said all the sub indices expanded on a month on month basis, contributing to this increase, mainly driven by the seasonal demand. The increase in new orders and production was mainly attributed to the manufacture of food and beverages and textile and apparel sectors. Further, a decline in price levels was also evident. Meanwhile, suppliers' delivery time remained lengthened, yet at a slower rate in March. The services PMI indicated a further expansion in services activities in March 2024 as reflected by the Business Activity Index which recorded an index value of 67.7. The continued expansion in business activity was driven by improvements observed across most of the subsectors. Central Bank said industry expectations for the next three months remain positive. However, a natural decrease in production during April following the end of seasonal peak is expected. The Sri Lanka-Pakistan Business Council of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce said it has discussed the potential for developing Buddhist pilgrimages to Pakistan. The discussions were held with the newly appointed Pakistani High Commissioner in Sri Lanka, Major General Fahim ul Aziz. In a statement, the Business Council said that even though the specific uh, areas are for Buddhist pilgrimage has been minimally explored, it holds significant potential given the large Buddhist population in Sri Lanka. During the visit, both parties also expressed their intention to collaborate for the future development of Sri Lanka and Pakistan bilateral relations, economic tourism and investment opportunities for both nations. The Colombo Boers, meanwhile, reverted to negative territory led by the ongoing global uncertainties. However, in the Middle East, breaking the str uh, streak of 11 consecutive gains witnessed during the last three weeks. The market began on a bearish note, dropping 100 points before rising to an intraday high of 12,048 and closing at 12,006 down 27 points. Commercial Bank, HNB, and Haley's were the biggest drag on the index, while within the banking sector, Commercial Bank, HNB, NDB, and DFCC enticed profit taking following price gains in the previous weeks. However, retail interest in local um, LOLC and Brown's investment rose during the day. Turnover hit 2.6 billion, 15.2% above the 2.2 billion monthly average. Today's turnover was dominated by the banking and food, beverage and tobacco sectors, contributing 26% and 22% respectively, with a collective contribution of 48%. Foreign investors remain net sellers with a net outflow of 315.2 million rupees amidst moderate participation. Now, Dilok Shadimel joins us with a few thoughts to round off our Markets and View segment for the week. Despite the short trading week, the positive investor sentiment continued with the ASPI rising above the 12,000 mark last week for the first time after 2022. The ASPI closed at 12,033.1 and an increase of 238 basis points. The S&P 20 also followed this trend, increasing by over 90 points to settle at 3,572 points. The total market turnover, however, declined 40% to 8.7 billion due to a decline in foreign activity in the market. 
moving on to last week's treasury bill auction yields declined one three and one basis points respectively for the three month six month and 12 month instruments in the treasury bond auction the two year and eight month treasury bond rate increased 11 basis points and on the international front, Nasdaq decreased 0.5%, although tech-related momentum stocks indicated positive signs of an increase. In commodities, oil prices declined 0.8% to close at 90.15 US dollars, and the gold prices increased by 0.5%, closing at 2,360.2 US dollars. In global markets, oil prices drifted down today with the market downplaying the risk of Iran's attack on Israel escalating into a broader regional conflict. Brent crude futures for June fell by 70 cents to close at $89.75 a barrel. In the meantime, U.S. West Texas intermediate futures for the month of May were down 75 cents to $84.92 a barrel. Both benchmarks rose on Friday in anticipation of Iran's attack on Israel with prices reaching their highest since October last year. However, the smaller than expected damages caused by the attack and the increased pressure on Israel not to retaliate caused investors to lessen their caution. Here's a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against other major currencies during the day. Taking you to your corporate affairs, US-based Boeing company, the aerospace company and manufacturer of commercial jetliners, has briefed Sri Lanka's Bandaranaika International Airport staff on the B-7779 airliner, which is expected to enter services in mid-2025. Officials from airport and aviation services and Sri Lankan Airlines had attended the session. A statement from Airport and Aviation Services of Sri Lanka said the session was conducted by the lead engineer of airport operations at Boeing Airport Operations Engineering. Boeing's B777X model promises greater fuel efficiency with the 777-9 and can carry over 400 passengers in two-class configuration. The airport has foldable wing tips allowing it to be parked at airports that can accommodate earlier B-777 style aircraft with a smaller wingspan. The Securities and Exchange Commission of Sri Lanka granted approval to delist the shares of Unisyst Engineering PLC from the official list of Colombo Stock Exchange at an exit offer price of 6 rupees per share. Meanwhile, Dialogue Asiata PLC was recognized as the most significant FDI contributor by the Board of Investment. With that, here's a look at more corporate news in brief. Sri Lanka's Haley's Group company, Unisyst Engineering Company, announced that it would be delisting from the Colombo Stock Exchange. Accordingly, the Securities and Exchange Commission of Sri Lanka granted approval to delist shares of the company at an exit offer price of 6 rupees per share. In its disclosure, the company added that an offer letter is yet to be presented to shareholders. Meanwhile, Dialogue Asiata PLC was recognized as the most significant FDI contributor by the Board of Investment. This accolade was presented during the 45th anniversary celebrations of the BOI. President Ranil Vikramasinghe handed over 30 awards to companies recognized for their noteworthy contributions. The BOI Awards program is aimed at recognizing enterprises which demonstrated resilience and innovative capabilities. 
also in corporate news, Coca-Cola announced the appointment of a new country director for Sri Lanka and Maldives with effect from the 1st of April. Becoming the first woman to hold this position, Kaushali Kusumapala was appointed as the Coca-Cola country director for Sri Lanka and the Maldives. The company added that in this position, the newly appointed country director will closely collaborate with bottling teams, customers, partners, consumers and external shareholders in both countries. And that's all from us here tonight. I'm Indeevari Amwatha. We'll see you again tomorrow at the same time. Good night.